All right, so welcome to Live from My Drum Room for a special episode, uh, a tour of my vintage and other symbol collection. And uh, that will include some memorabilia that you may have seen before, but this is uh, pretty much all the symbols I own I have kind of around me. There's a few others scattered around in different places. Um, I think I have a couple at where my band rehearses that are just kind of there, but I think I have pretty much everything that I own here. And uh, it's not as much as you might think. I'm going to start off by saying that. And uh, I, I wanted to start by saying, if you don't already know this about me, I worked for Zildjian uh, for 24 years. I was going to say almost 25 years. And um, during my time there, I didn't acquire many or hardly any at all, really, symbols. I wasn't really playing much. Uh, in fact, at a point, I kind of stopped playing because my job just took so much of my time in my life. I had, uh, you know, I, I couldn't play in a band. I couldn't commit to anything like that. And uh, it was pretty consuming. So my point being that I didn't see a reason when we came out with a new ride symbol or crash symbol to go, I'm going to grab one off the first run and, you know, a prototype or something, which a lot of the people that were actively playing drums did do. And it, and it was allowed because typically they were not part of this Zildjian's inventory. So you could, and someone, frankly, at my level in the company could do that. I could take a symbol home and try it and, and all that. So, but I didn't, that's my point to all this is I, so really most of almost everything that I have now I acquired in the last 10 years after leaving Zildjian, which I know what you're thinking and you're right. That's pretty stupid, John. You really had an opportunity that you blew and you're right. I did. It's not the first time I've blown an opportunity either, either. I'll tell you that right now. So just saying that, that, um, and you know, I, there were many of us, uh, people that work for me in artist relations also that, um, didn't really play drums. They might've played years before, but you know, once you <clears throat> get entrenched in the job and you're out every night of the week, at least the way I was and traveling a couple of times a month and, you know, kind of the last thing you want to do, frankly, is come home and play the drums. You just kind of want to take a break from it. I hope that makes sense. I can't imagine that now, but at the time that was certainly the case. Um, so having said all that, uh, what you see here today, as I say, is mostly or 99% of it is symbols that I, are symbols that I accumulated, have bought myself, uh, you know, used or in some cases new in the last 10 years. And uh, the first thing I want to show you, though, is something pretty cool. I dug it out today in, uh, in preparation for this show, and it's a very rare and unique t-shirt that we made specially for Ringo Starr. It may look like a classic Zildjian black t-shirt, but actually this is a silver foil. I'm, I'm sp it's almost like I think that by speaking closer to the mic, you can see it better. <laughs> anyway, this, uh, Jeff Chonis, who is Ringo's longtime drum tech going back to the 80s, um, contacted me. This would have been uh, 2010, maybe 2012. I forget the year. It was while I was still working at Zildjian. Jeff is one of my oldest and best pals. In fact, him and Harry McCarthy were partners at the original Drum Paradise in Los Angeles. That's when I met those guys. Anyway, so Jeff's been Ringo's tech since the 80s, since mid late eighties and uh, contacted me when they were, when Ringo and the band were going on tour. And he said, Ringo asked about getting a fitted black t-shirt with a silver kind of foiled Zildjian logo. And if he likes it, he'll wear it. So we made a, a bunch of these up for Ringo size, small, same as me. And uh, I think Jeff actually encouraged me to keep one for myself. So I did. Anyway, so this t-shirt I've had for 10 or 12 or some odd number of years now um, was part of a run that we made for Ringo. And I know he did wear it a couple of times. Um, and it has the trademark on the back. And it's, as you can, I hope you can see in the, you know, in the light on the camera that it's a 
foil, silver foil Zildjian. It's pretty cool. And it's, as I say, it's one of maybe at the most six that Zildjian made. So anyway, I don't wear Zildjian swag much these days anymore, <laughs> if you haven't noticed, but uh, this is one that's pretty cool and unique. So I thought I'd put it on today. All right. So got that started. Want to get that going. Um, I also want to take one moment and I know we're here to talk about symbols today, but I want to thank a good friend, Bob Saul, who I mentioned before. Uh, I bought my Campco drum set you see behind me from Bob. And uh, he and I had been in, and I love that drum set. I used it on a gig a couple of weeks ago, and I'm most certainly going to use it next week when my band resumes playing again. And uh, I'd been in touch with Bob about trying to find a snare drum. And, and if you don't know who Bob Saul is, he is, I have him in my phone as Campco expert. <laughs> um, he is the man when it comes to Campco. And there are a few people like Mario Caleri and others that really know their stuff. My friend John Ferraro, who's watching right now, certainly I would consider an expert on Campco. But Bob is a guy that can find all these kits and he restores them and cleans them and refurbishes them. Um, and what I'm getting at is, last week Bob contacted me to say he'd found me a snare drum. And I have said snare drum in my hand right now. And this is an Oaklawn, Illinois Campco snare in Champagne Sparkle. I don't know the year, and if Bob's watching, maybe he'll jump in and tell us. Um, it has the chrome over brass hoops. It's an unbelievable drum. It's in beautiful condition. Um, pretty much, I, you know, my understanding is it's all original. I'm going to see what it sounds like through this microphone, this Shure MV7 excellent microphone I have here. And again, thanks to my buddy Ryan Smith for that. Um, pardon the uh, lack of technique, having not played for a week. Boy, these be the sticks are... Can you see how worn down my sticks are? My gosh, I didn't realize they were this, this far gone. <laughs> that sound can you is it really loud and I hope it's not breaking up but great sounding drum great cross stick wow yeah thanks Dan well I had a cymbal to hit We'll get to that in a second. So, Bob, if you're watching, thank you so much. I love the drum. I did a little tweaking to it after I received it yesterday, um, and it sounds fabulous. I'm looking forward to playing it later today with the kit. Um, it's so sensitive. I don't know if you can tell by hearing it. Um, I have absolutely no chops, as many of you know when it comes to playing a press roll. So the fact that I can get it to buzz like this, is it's really all in the drum. It's certainly not my technique. Wow. All right, so now we're gonna talk about cymbals. And uh, I have more symbols than I more symbols than I realized. So for that reason, I'm not going to hit every symbol that I have. But I'm going to just talk about a few real quick. I'm going to start with two of my very favorites. This is a 16 A Zildjian Thin Crash. This is an 18 A Zildjian Thin Crash. And these two symbols were made in 2012. They were from the first oven run of Zildjian's redesigned A's. I was still working at Zildjian uh, when we they redesigned the A's and made them lighter. And Paul Francis was on my show a couple of weeks ago. You might have seen that. And we talked about how he changed the curvatures a little bit. Uh, but I remember at the time when Paul did this, he, 
he, he was even surprised at how little work it took. Um, and I don't say that to diminish the work that Paul did, but I think making them lighter right out of the gate immediately improved the sound. And then he did some other things as well. But I remember the first prototypes that he showed me having just ma making them thinner was a huge improvement. So my suspicion for all these years working there that, that they were too heavy was proven true as were, you know, other people felt the same way. It wasn't just me, but, uh, the end result was Zildjian redesigning the A series. Um, and these were the I first, could you try again? <laughs> these were the, f these were from the first oven load, uh, that, that Zildjian did production run and it's a 16 and 18 thin crash. So check it out. Um, you may have heard these before. Here's the 16. I use these a lot. I keep them here in my practice room. I gig with these quite often. Um, I haven't been lately and I'll tell you about that in a little bit, but I, for the last, since I've been in my band, Grand Theft Audio coming on nine years now, um, most every gig I've used these two symbols. And I've worried about breaking them. Uh, and that's another story. You know, I, I worry about stuff like that. But here's the 16. And here's the 18. So... I'm hoping, you know, I did a little test earlier and, and listened to the recording. So I'm hoping <clears throat> they sound, you know, pleasing to your ears through the, uh, you know, high tech zoom hookup that I have here and the microphone and everything. So, um, you know, I'm just, I've always been partial to A's and I talked about this on the show with Paul Francis a couple of weeks ago again, and you know, the late great Armin Zildjian, who I learned so much from about symbols and Lenny DiMuzio. Um, but Armin really instilled to me and to many of us that were there at that time, how versatile A's are and how great they sound. If you get the right ones, if you find the right ones. So I've got two right here that are absolutely the right ones. And I'm, I'm really lucky to have them. Really glad to have them. They will never leave my collection. And I, every time I hit one on a gig, I pray I don't crack it. <laughs> um, I haven't really done a lot of that lately. Cracking symbols, I did that years ago. Jim Kersey, I do have a flat rod. Only one, and I'll show you that in a moment. Um, so I have those. And from that, from that same oven, I'll show you a couple of kooky oddballs I have here. So yeah, okay. Paul made me a 20 inch a medium ride and it was a little bit heavy. So years later, so I got this in 2012, 2013, 10 years ago, and I played it for a while. And it sounded good, but it still sounded heavy to me. It sounded like a, a kind of just a little too heavy, a little clangy. So I gave it to Paul some years ago, and he lathed it for me and made it into more of a crash ride. So now, and at the same time, he knows how partial I am to the old hollow logos, which I'll back up a second. When we introduced, going back 10 years ago, when I was still working at Zildjian, and we were introducing the redesigned A's, I said, we should put the hollow logo on there. Um, but I was overruled. People felt, no, we need to put the, uh, you know, the big, bold, thick logo. And I thought, no, this will, people will under, this will resonate with people like me, older people who will buy these symbols, that this was the original Zildjian logo. And at first, when they first started putting logos on symbols, it was the hollow logo in the seventies only for a few years. And then it went to the thick logo, you know, the bold filled in logo. So anyway, Paul, as a sort of, you know, nod to my preference, put this on here for me, which I appreciated. And, uh, you know, I'm going to just put it on my finger. It's probably going to be easier than trying to put it on that stand. And I mean, it's certainly a, a good light ride.
I don't know how well that sounds, how good that sounds through the speaker. I hope it's sounding the way I want it to sound. And also at the same time, I got this, what became a thin crash, 20 inch, with a couple of rivets. I, I ended up taking most of the rivets out and leaving just one in, but Paul had put, I guess, six in there for me to make it like a proper sizzle. But it was a little choked, and he warned me that it could be a little bit choked with that many rivets. So I think I've taken out all but one. It's a great symbol. I've used this a lot on gigs. Um, so I'm left-handed. So this I would call my right side ride the way that a right-handed drummer would call their other ride, their left side ride. So I think that makes sense to you guys being that I'm left-handed. This was on my right side like this. And I would use this as a crash ride. Uh, my band does the song something by the Beatles. And this was a perfect symbol for that song. You know, that, Ringo plays a sizzle crash in that, if you know it. It's uh, it's just got a very slight sizzle to it, really subtle, doesn't overpower it. Um, we would do um, a song by the Almond Brothers called Blue Sky. And if you know the song, you know there's a really extended guitar solo where uh, Dickie Betts breaks into this really long solo. So I would play the chorus of the song on my main ride. And then during that instrumental, I'd switch to this, and it would be a completely different sounding ride. And I just, you know, you play it soft. I just, you know, eighth notes. And it really, again, I, I had drummers um, come up and, and comment on how great it sounded as a, as a contrasting. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm basically pretending to be a jazz drummer. I'm trying to be like Peter Erskine. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, Peter does this sort of thing, and you know, Jeff Hamilton and Joe LaBarber, real drummers, you know, that have like a, a, a left side ride will we'll play it, you know, that other ride, that other sound, that other voice. So I would, I would use this for that. I haven't used it lately. I've had this on my little, on my Rogers kit. Um, so anyway, get those guys out of the way. I'm gonna probably, kind of going in, going in no particular order. Uh, I'm going to show you a couple of oddball symbols that I have. When I say oddball, I, I kind of look around for weird, rare symbols that I think might sound pretty cool, but at the very least would just be cool to have. And I have to stop doing this because in many of these instances, or at least some of them, um, I've ended up with some real duds. And I'll, uh, The first symbol I'll show you, in fact, is the king dud. Hang on. There it is, right on the top, right on the top of the pile. I found this 20-inch Amer Zildjian from early 1980s. And again, some of you might know what Amer is. It was Zildjian's first attempt at a sheet symbol, sheet bronze B8 alloy, which Peisty is, of course, well known for, Minel to some degree as well. Uh, but this is where, you know, Peisty really sort of earned their stripes with their, their B8 symbols. Giant Beats and the 2002s and so many other symbols. So um, Zildjian made these and they made them really well when they first came out. And so I saw this first generation Amer symbol on Reverb or eBay or someplace. I bought it at a pretty good price, actually a pretty cheap price. And the, the moral of the story is you get what you pay for because this symbol sounds horrible. Uh, the guy that owned it, I don't know if he ran it over, but you can see... It's warped. Again, there was no mention of that when I bought it. I didn't even ask the seller if I could send it back. I mean, I, this is a lesson learned. Um, I don't want to be that guy. I paid, I don't know, 50 or 60 bucks for it. So, you know, I, I, I'm not going to now say, hey, you got to give me my money back for it. I'm going to just take it as a, you know, a lesson learned. What I used to tell my kids, I hope you learned something from this. And I did. It sounds like poop. Not, you know. I mean, it's dead. 
I mentioned this to Paul Francis a while back, and he said, Paul lives about 30 miles from me. He lives not far at all. And he said to bring it to him, and he's going to see if he can do something with it. And he probably can. So I'm hopeful I can, you know, make lemonade out of this true lemon, this 20-inch lemon. So that's my first sort of oddball, but it gets even more odd, more odd and rare. So there's that. All right. The next guy, and this, this was pretty good. This is a 20-inch, I know what you're thinking, it looks like an A Zildjian, right? Well, it's not. It's a Zin, I want to say it's a, it's a Super Zin, which was Zin's kind of higher quality. And if you don't know what Zin is, these were made in England, and I believe, and you, you guys can correct me, uh, you experts, but I believe they were made by Premier. And these were very popular in the 60s and even in the 70s in England because you couldn't get Zildjian and Peisty hadn't really, really sort of gotten into the market yet in the, in the way that they did later. Um, and again, it was a homegrown brand in England. And uh, so Zin was, Ringo Starr used them. I found out later, you talking to Charlie one night at a gig he mentioned playing Zen cymbals, and I never knew he played them. And he said, oh, he, oh God, they were bloody awful. We all, we all played them. It was all we could get, you know? So, so, of course, then I became obsessed with finding some Zen cymbals. I found one through Steve Maxwell's drum shop. And this was probably 10 years ago or maybe less. And uh, I, the, the guys at Maxwell's, uh, Jess Birch and Steve himself, I got a great deal on it. And it was decent. It was okay. It wasn't great. I just wanted to have it in my collection. It was pretty good though. And I thought, you know, Ringo might get a kick out of this. So a couple of years later, I brought it to a Ringo gig in Boston and I gave it to Ringo. And the funny thing was he didn't remember playing Zen cymbals. That's another Ringo side story. He just didn't have a recollection. And if you watch the Get Back documentary came out last year, there's... He, you can see he's playing a Zen symbol as late as 1969 when they made the Let It Be album and, and um, you know, did the rooftop concert. 68, 69, he was still playing that Zen symbol, but he played it through the 60s. Um, anyway, so I gave Ringo that and I managed to find another 20. And this one actually sounds a little better, although not fantastic, but it's a 20 inch Zen. Uh, looks like an A medium ride. You know, if I had that as a kid starting off, I'd be, I'd be happy. I, the, this junk that I started with, as probably a lot of people my age did in the early 70s, you know, you couldn't afford a Zildjian. And the only thing between, the only thing other than a Zildjian or a high quality symbol was, you know, a pie plate, basically, a really crappy sounding uh, symbol. So this is pretty cool. And I, I'm glad I have it in my collection. So that's another oddball. I've got... A cool little, uh, whoopsie, sorry about that. Juan Escovito, I just want to say hello to Juan Escovito, my good, good friend of the Escovito family. And Juan, thank you for your nice comment. And thanks for watching today. And I was in touch with Sheila not too long ago. And um, I love all you guys. And I miss all you guys, your dad, your mom, Peter Michael, you, Sheila, everybody. So big love to you, my friend. Um, so I got... These hi-hats I found a while ago, and again, they look like old new beats, probably, right? Look like old A's from the 60s. They're actually, got to be careful I don't get too far from the microphone. They're actually a company uh, made in Italy called Cashian, and I believe they were either made by UFIP or a subsidiary of UFIP or some connection. I think most of the Italian symbol companies in some way or shape, come back to, um, you know, someone that worked at UFIP who started a company called this or that or Tosco or Cashian. Anyway, 
These sound pretty cool. They sound like really soft, mellow new beats. These right here, I'm going to take one second and play these and show you these. Um, these cymbals are my current favorite pair of new beats that I have. I have a, quite a few old vintage new beats. I'm always on the lookout. These are 14s, obviously. And the bottom is a 70s. It has a... No, actually, no. These are 60s. These are 60s. So, yeah, I think these are the right ones. I took these out of my cymbal bag, so I'm thinking these are the right ones. When I play gigs with my band, I'll say their name again, Grand Theft Audio, I'm often using these hi-hats. Um, they sound great. And what I love about these is they're like the perfect blend of bright but mellow, if that makes sense. Um, new Beats are great cymbals no matter what. Even the new ones, I think, sound great, but they're, but they're heavier. And they, even the newer ones that are redesigned are still a little bright, if you know what I mean. Um, these have, have the benefit of being older, and they've mellowed out, and they have a patina on them. I would never clean them. Um, I, just, I, like, I actually prefer the look of that versus a shiny cymbal. So I like that, and I'd just be afraid of changing the sound anyway. They sound so good. Um, bottom's, bottom's pretty heavy. You can hear by the high pitch. The top's very light. Almost like a crash. And the end result is... Um, for like the Ringo wash and so my favorite new beats I wanted you to hear those I'm definitely like I said not going to be able to hit every symbol I have here today because I'm taking a long time going through each of these but I did take the time to put hi-hat clutches on all the hi-hats for ease of demonstration but let me put these uh, Cashians up. And Bob Sidlowski has just informed me, of course, that he has a pair of these as well. Because Bob is a collector like me. All right, so these are actually a tad shorter than 14. They're like 13 and 3 quarter, which is not unusual. As I'm sure a lot of you know about with these old uh, vintage symbols, they're often not exactly the right size. What they claim to be. So you can tell right away they're, they're softer, kind of a little more muted. Hear the difference? But they sound good. I've used these on a couple of gigs. Um, live playing them, they don't really feel like they're cutting as well as the others. And maybe it's just my ears. They probably cut just fine. I'm sure they'd record beautifully. I've never recorded with them. But given how how soft and kind of muted they are, they probably would sound great recorded. Um, you can hear the top cymbal is a lot higher pitched, even though it's thin. Great chick sound. And uh, it's just got a very subtle, I don't know if you're going to be able to see this. The trademark, where is it? The Cashian, uh, there it is. Yeah. So, made in Italia, the home country. Had to get these. Had to get them. So, um, a couple other odd things. I've got some hand symbols that my late great father-in-law, Vic Firth, gave to me. Uh, they're kind of buried. I'm going to come back to those. All right, so, this is where it's going to get a little weird, probably, for some people. Uh, don't worry, I'm not going to take my shirt off. But I, uh, I was always sort of uh, curious and interested in, like, John Bonham, of course, his cymbal sound, Charlie Watts, and a lot of these drummers that played old Peisty cymbals back in the day, in the 60s and even in the 70s. 
And for a long time, I think like a lot of people, I just assumed they were 2002s. That's what, that's what, you know, everybody sort of associates, I think, with Peisty when it comes to rock symbols, like, you know, classic rock and classic Peisty symbols is the 2002 line. And, you know, stupid me. I mean, I really didn't get hip to the giant beats until, I don't know, 15 years ago. And uh, I started to investigate and learn more about them. And I'm talking about, you know, they, they relaunched the line sometime in the 2000s. And they sound good, but I'm talking about the originals, the, the ones they made from 67 until, I guess, when they discontinued them in 71 or 72 for the, for the uh, introduction of the 2002. So the original Giant Beats from the 60s, what they call the white label and black label. And I found my first one in 2015. I bought one. And... It's not a lot to look at. It's B8, which, again, if you don't know what B8 is, it's 92% copper, 8% tin. Whereas Zildjian symbols, you know, all the top line Zildjian symbols are 80% copper, 20% tin. Higher tin content gives it that sparkle, gives it that body. Um, and it really, you know, there really is a difference in the alloy, definitely. But, there's something really special about these old giant beats. And uh, with all respect to Peisty, I don't think they've really managed to recreate how great these original ones are with the redesigned ones. And I say that hopefully not to start a fight with anybody, but this is a 20 inch, um, you know, and it's considered like a crash ride, 20 inch uh, giant beat. I have four of these. This is my favorite of the four. I was using this as my main ride for quite a long time. And it's, it's a little bit thin to use for an all purpose ride to use for everything. But for the most part, it works really well. Um, the bell is fantastic. And the crash sound is So I called it a crash ride. They call it a multi. They call it a multi-purpose, but same, same, you know, crash ride. Anyway. Um... Yes, Bob, I have four. And uh, this, is, this is a beauty. This one is, is the one. The other three sound really close. But for me, when I play this, it's, you know, kind of coming back to me is where I really hear the difference. I've heard other people play them. Um, and from far away, they don't sound that much different to me, but enough so that this one really kind of stands out. So this is my favorite. I have one um, that I was using for a while. Not this one, but another one. And I was using it because it was had a little bit more stick sound to it. And I'll show you. That one. So this one, yeah, I was using this one for a while um, and it looks a lot dirtier and more beaten up as you can see, but it had a better stick, stick definition, still crashed pretty well and, and good bell sound. And we were playing a gig. This was not that long ago, maybe, maybe, four months ago, six months ago, one of our favorite places, a place called Palmer's in Andover, Mass. My band was playing there, Grand Theft Audio, and we were probably four songs into the first set. And the light hit my cymbal just right. You know what I'm going to say. You can, see, you can hear it. It's... it's Light hit it just right, and I could see a crack. Little, little edge crack. My biggest fear 
Uh, I don't know if you can see it, but anyway, not that you even need to see it. I think I'm holding it in the wrong spot anyway. I don't know where it is. It's on here. Trust me. Oh, there it is. Yeah. So, yeah. So I took it. I always bring an extra ride with me. And uh, I took that, this symbol off and put the other ride on. One of my old 20 A's and uh, got through the rest of the night. And again, I think Paul is going to, at some point when I go see him, is going to be able to fix that crack for me. Uh, my pal Dan Garza offered to uh, repair it as well. But <clears throat> Paul's local, and so that shouldn't be a problem. I hope you guys can hear me still. When I, when I bend down to pick up a cymbal, can you still? I'm coming through the mic, right? Just give me a thumbs up if that's cool. Um, so, yeah, I have two more. And this one. This one's kind of cool because it still has... The Giant Beat logo, the original, what they call the white label. Where is it? Yeah. So the person that owned it before me cleaned around it so that he didn't rub off the logo. Lo I think he put tape or something over the logo so he didn't uh, rub it off. So anyway, it still has the logo intact. That's pretty cool. That makes it very valuable. Um. And they go, you know, they don't, if you see them on eBay and Reverb, you see they're not cheap if you find a good one. I had five at one time and I sold one of them because I thought five was too many. But four seems like just enough. <laughs> I keep telling myself that. All right. So let me move along here. I've got uh, talking about Peisty. So I've actually accumulated quite a few vintage Peisty symbols. And again, I, that's probably surprising a lot of people. It shouldn't. I'm a drummer. I go for sounds, um, you know, I, I've gotten to the point where, you know, I'm, I'm just, I'm just using what I think I need to use for certain things. So, um, and these, you know, Zildjian makes great, great, great symbols. They make absolutely great symbols. And for that B20 sound, I can't imagine using anything else, but, um, but these, you know, have a certain thing to them. You know, and uh, this is just a 2002 ride, good old, you know, 1977. It's got the black label. It's kind of like an A Zildjian medium ride with a little bit more shimmer and brightness to it, if that makes sense. All right. Um, I'm going to skip these guys for the moment. I've got some. Uh, these are original uh, 602 pre-serial number sound inch hi-hats, 14 inch. And they sound good. You know, they're very light. As you know what the sound, these have the, the, the older sound edge. My understanding is there were fewer, fewer of the ripples. So they're not as bright, which is what I like. But I don't play these too much, and I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if somewhere down the road I just move them along to somewhere else, you know, sell them or something. I've used these for light gigs. Um, when I play gigs on Martha's Vineyard with some friends, and it's a small place, and I take like a bass drum and a snare drum and a hi-hat and a ride, I might take these just because they're so light and soft. They make very little sound. I don't have any Sabians, Bob. No, I don't. Um, that's just one of those things. That's when Armin would send that bolt of lightning down on me. So anyway, I've got these. Um, I've got, again, I you know, talking about our friends in Switzerland, I've got a pair of 15-inch newer giant beat hi-hats that I use sometimes. And again, they have a sound. I don't have a clutch for these, so I'm not going to put them on the stand, but, um, you know, they sometimes make it on a gig, to a gig, at a gig. Uh, a couple more things. A 20-inch 2002 medium, again, from the 70s. I think this is 74. No, this one's, this one's 77 as well. So, it's, you know, it's a crash, basically.
I was using this as a ride too for a little while. I was like, sort of. Is that okay? Jim Kersey, Jim Kersey, are you still watching? Here it is. I uh, I found this guy at a good price. What about big size chinas? We're getting there, Sergey. This is a 2002 20-inch flat ride. There you are, Jim. Um, it's got a really lousy bell sound, though. But a Again, this is a 1976 2002 flat. So um, I've never used it on a gig. I've just kind of messed with it. Um, I shouldn't even show you this, but I'm going to. I'm going to full disclosure here. Um, I had one of these a long time ago, like literally 40 years ago when they came out, just to try. And uh, again, one of those things that I foolishly bought and regretted. I didn't pay much for it. Um, and again, this is probably going to make its way into the, uh, for sale bin. It's a, it, it is what it is. I don't even have to play it. You kind of know what it's going to sound like a 20 inch rude crash, crash ride, ride crash. I mean, it's, it's certainly not terrible, but. I did use one of these for a little while back in the eighties. In, uh, in my olden days. It's okay. Um, so a couple, a couple of more rarities here that I think, um, yeah, Dan, you sold your route too. You know, it was a, a phase maybe we all went through at one point, right? That's, I think that's going to, if I were to thin out the herd, that would be one of the first to go, I think. So in my quest, before I discovered Giant Beat, I was looking for a sound that I knew was a sheet bronze cymbal. And when I say, you know, a B8 Peisty type sound. And so I tried these old guys, the 404s. This is a 20 inch ride. I remember these when I worked in a music store many years ago. And It's a, it's a good symbol. You know, it's a low price symbol. They were low priced. I don't think they make these anymore. This would have been, this is, doesn't even have a serial number. 70s, I think, anyway. Um, and same alloy as the 2002 and the Giant Beat. And it's okay, you know. And I found this guy, a medium, 20 inch. 404 and this guy doesn't have a serial number either so and again I'm guessing it's 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 being lost through the translation of the microphone but what you will immediately notice any anybody will notice this I you know you don't have to be a super discerning have super discerning ears to notice that um these lack the complexity that the giant beats have. There's just, there's more happening. And that's because those symbols, there's more workmanship put into those giant beats. Um, these are good for an inexpensive um, symbol, which is what they were marketed as a long time ago. But I, I wouldn't really, I mean, and you could say they're professional, but I wouldn't really call them professional compared to the giant beat and the 2002. So... Anyway, that's that. And this guy actually was one of the first old Peisties that I bought. I bought this from my buddy Chris uh, Dillerman up in Portland, Maine, drum shop of Portland, Maine. It's a 602 Peisty ride. And uh, when I first started playing again in 2014 in my band, I was looking for something, you know, like a good multi-purpose ride. And this is actually, I used it for a while, but it's actually a little heavier than I wanted it to be. 
does not crash well. And I've come to learn that they're all like this pretty much. They're all pretty heavy. This one's probably, well, I can tell you it's 24, 2,404 grams. It's about 450 grams or 400 grams heavier than these giant beats. Um, and about 400 grams heavier than the old A's that I have too. They're around 2000 grams. So, and I didn't know that much about these or the gram, the, the, you know, the gram weights of all these other symbols at the time. And, uh, yeah, it's okay, but it's not great. I mean, it's, I know they made some great 602s, but, um, this one's, it's a pretty good ride. It's actually a very good ride, but it's not uh, a symbol that I would use as my main ride these days. All right. Um, I've also got a couple of newer 2002s that I picked up a while ago that I'm just kind of, when I feel like digging them out, I use them. An 18 inch thin and a 17 inch thin. They sound nice. They're sound. Um, different from the A Zildjian's I was talking about. And sometimes I'm looking for something a little, it speaks a little differently. So someone had asked, um, Rick, thanks for saying you thought they, s I thought the rude sounded okay. Okay, cool. Well, I mean, it doesn't sound terrible. Um, Someone had asked if I had, oh, only Zildjian and Peisty. No, I have, oh, you know what? Did I show you guys these two? Sorry, Since we're, we're still talking about uh, Peisty for one more second. I'm gonna show you. My friend Dan Garza is watching. Um, I actually have two pairs these are very rare. These are original 15 inch giant beat, the original white label giant beat hi hats from the 60s. Um, this particular set still has the logo. Again, these are, you know, again, John Bonham era giant beats. Very rare. People pay a lot of money for these. And great sounding. Maybe just not enough chick for me. You know, I play a lot of eighth note with my foot stuff. And I just found that it, they tended to get a little bit lost. But they sound great. You know, it's an open sort of sloshy thing. Um. So anyway, I've got one and then these guys, another set. Um, I don't have a clutch for these. They actually sound actually maybe even a little better, to be honest with you. I don't know why I put a clutch on these and not on these, but I do crazy things, but again, these are an original, the logos are rubbed off these, but these are original white label, 15 inch giant beat hot hats. So I have two pairs of the original and one pair of the uh, reissued. And I do use the reissued sometimes. I'd just be afraid of, and they, they cut, they're a little heavier. Um, they do project a little more than the, um, the originals do. All right, so where are we going here? Someone asked about symbols other than Zildjian, and someone asked how long I worked at Zildjian. 24 years at Zildjian. Um, and I'll just give you a little bit, little bit more background. I worked uh, retail in a drum shop for about five years before I started working in the drum industry from like 1979 until 1985. And then in 1985, I started working for uh, Simmons Electronic Drums. I worked there a year and a few months. 1986, I went to work for DW Drums, Drum Workshop. Of course, everybody knows who they are. Uh, I worked there until 1989. And uh, that's when I joined Zildjian in 1989. And, 
Yeah, EU Wurlitzer, Darren, absolutely. Um, great place. I worked there in the day. So, you know, I, I, I know cymbals. I'm a drummer. I've been playing drums since I was 11, 12. Um, by the time I went to work at Zildjian in 1989, I had been playing professionally, you know, uh, for all intents and purposes, for like 15 years. I'd started playing professionally when I was 13 or 14 in 1974. So point being that I, you know, I, I have, I, I had a good uh, background on knowing cymbals. And uh, not long after joining Zildjian, I was, I was made part of the, uh, what we called the R&D team in those days. I want to say around 1990, you know, within a few months of working there, I was on, added to that team. I think we formed the team at that point, right up until a couple of years before I left. And I sort of gave up my seat to let some of the younger, newer employees kind of have an opportunity to be on that team. But I was part of that for 20 years. We designed and developed lots of symbols in that time, you know, the, the Constantinople symbols, the A custom symbols, the special dries, the original special dries, the K custom darks, um, gosh, I mean, and on and on and on. So, um, yeah. So anyway, I do have a, I don't consider myself an expert, but I do have a background in it. All right. Anyway, on to the question about an, a symbol that's not a Zildjian or a Peisty. And that would be, this is one of them, and this is a recent acquisition, a gift from my sister-in-law. It's a Symbol Craftsman 20-inch classic medium ride made by young Paul Francis, as we used to call him at Zildjian, Paul Francis. And uh, I've been using this for the last couple of months now since getting it for Christmas or my birthday. And... Uh, Continues to sound better and better, as Paul said it would. You know, and again, it's it's um, it's not something if you're looking for. You know, if, if I were in a band that played all Led Zeppelin songs, I, I probably wouldn't use this symbol because it really wouldn't sound t like authentic enough to me. Um, I mean, it would sound great and it would work fine, but I'm just kind of a freak like that, I guess you could say. I'd probably get something, you know, more in the B8 zone. But this is, I don't play all Led Zeppelin songs, so this works perfectly for what my band does, which is a whole mix of different things. Um, and it's a great symbol, and I'm really, really happy with it. And uh, a couple more oddballs that I have here in rarities. I did have a pair of hi hats I wanted to show you guys. Where did I put them? Ah, they're buried. Okay, another pair of non Zildjian or Spice. I discovered these. I don't know how many years ago. Symbol and Gong, made in Turkey. Um, a friend of mine named Nate Morrison had a drum shop in Beverly, Mass. called uh, Drum Shop North of the North Shore. No longer in business, unfortunately, but Nate and I got to be um, good buddies. And one day I was up at his shop looking for some new hi-hats, looking for something, um, you know, washier, but still warm sounding, you know, the perfect pair of hi-hats, basically. All you drummers know what I'm talking about. I, I walked in looking for the perfect pair. I said, Nate, show me the perfect pair of hi-hats. And uh, luckily, he didn't throw me out of the store. He basically said, look, I'm going to let you go through everything I have, which was quite a lot of stuff. And I ended up, I kept coming back to these. And these are 15s, but they're just a little smaller than 15. But as I say, they're made in Turkey, they're hand-hammered, and they're made by this company called Symbol and Gong. And I believe they are imported from Turkey from uh, Revival Drum Shop in Seattle. I think that's the U.S. I could be wrong about that. I think you can get them there. But um, there's a guy on Drum Forum named Todd Bishop, who I think is the importer of these cymbals. But anyway, these are great. I have these on one of my little jazz sets out in my other room there. 
I was using these a lot on gigs. And they're perfect for that soft, washy, you know. Really dry, but maybe just not enough cut for what I want. Maybe just not enough bite. Um, but I, again, I would bet you anything they'd record beautifully. Be curious to know if anybody watching is familiar with these symbols, cymbal and gong, they're called. And they're, like I said, they're made in Turkey. Um, you can see they're very, they look kind of like the way Zildjian makes their Karope and Avita symbols with that um, patina on them. I don't know if it's the same process that these guys use, but anyway, they sound really good. Uh, I like them. And maybe I'll use them again. All right. So that's another. I've got a pair of old 15A New Beats. Again, that I used these for years. I don't have a clutch on these. Look at that. I mean, that's a lot of sweat and a lot of gigs. <laughs> um, these sound great. They're, they, they're a little less subtle than some of my other, certainly than the 14 New Beats. Um, so I kind of shied away from these after a while. They were maybe a little clunky. But they sound good. I mean, they really do sound good. Um, what else was I going to show you here? What are we doing for time? Wow, okay. I'm going to try to wrap this up pretty soon because I don't want this to go too long. A couple more things. Um, a 20-inch 60s sizzle ride. Just says sizzle on it when Zildjian used to just call them sizzles. You can see that. I got this with a kit that I bought. Yeah. All right, sizzle. Um, okay, this, now I'm getting to a couple of this is one of my favorite rides for a long time. It's an A20 from probably the 60s. It's, oh, this one doesn't have the gram weight. It's probably 1950 grams. Great, great crash. Good stick. Used this for many years with Grand Theft Audio, my main ride. Um, this is a, a 22A. It's a big boy. Gary, can I do free shipping? All right, these uh, last two I'm going to show you right here. I think that's kind of it. I mean, I have some others I guess I can dig into. Um, in fact, I will do that before I show you these last two. All right, get ready for a big noise. Hold on. A pair of Master Sounds. A pair of Master Sound hi-hats I'm not going to bother with. You know what they sound like. Um, it's a prototype 20 inch K Sweet Crash that Paul gave me years ago, Paul Francis. Very nice. All right. These are 16-inch K-Suite hats. Um, I don't have a clutch for these. Trust me when I tell you, these are 
heavy, you know, when you put these on a cymbal, on a hi-hat stand. And I did use these, as you can see, quite a bit for a while. And they're easier to play than you might think, but just maybe a little too big. I wanted to try them. Kirsten Jensen at the Zildjian West office uh, gave me these. I saw them at the NAMM show a few years ago, and she saw me checking them out, and she said, put your name on them, and I'll send them to you. Thanks, Kirsten. So I did. I think, yeah, Johnny D underneath. And uh, that's what we used to do in the old days. Peter Erskine would come to the booth at the NAMM show and hit all the symbols and go, I like this one, I like that one, and I'd put Peter's name, and at the end of the show, we'd send them to Peter, or he'd pick them up. Anyway, so I got to do that, which is very kind of Kirsten to do. Yeah, K-Sweet Hats, very nice, 16s. Man, I got quite a pile of stuff here. This is part of my digging kit. Someone asked about the China, um, or I guess someone asked about Oriental Chinas. I don't know about that. Um, but this is, a, this is a 90s China Boy Low 18 that I bought from Nate, from, uh, sorry, from Shane Kinney at uh, Drum Center of Portsmouth. Oh, I cut my finger. And uh, this is a great China. And it is, in fact, my, my gigging China. But... Darren's asking about old pangs. Um, only the ones in my stomach. But it was no. Um, I don't have any pangs, but people often, God, my finger is bleeding big time. People often confuse pangs with swishes. So I don't know if you if you're actually referring to an actual pang symbol, which I saw this recently. Someone was talking about Buddy Rich playing a pang symbol. Buddy never played a pang. He played a swish. A pang symbol has a flat edge. Swish and China symbols have an upturned edge, and they sound more Chinese. A pang symbol sounds kind of more like a ride symbol. Um, yeah, you mean you mean pang? Okay, you had two. So good man, Darren. So you do know the difference. Cool. And if some people love them, you know, if some people have them and love them. So I don't have any pangs, but I do have an old '70s swish. I think it's from the '70s. Might even be older than that. 18 inch, really thin, and this is a beauty. This I keep on my practice kit at home. It used to be my gigging china, uh, but it's really thin. And now it has blood on it from my finger. Um, this, uh, this showed up as a return symbol from somebody at Zildjian, it was going to be scrapped, like cut up and sent to the scrap, you know, scrap iron. So I grabbed it. A few of these were that, were like that as well. So, um, but I'm thinking I'm going to get a 20 inch China, something a little bigger than what I have. I have that 18 I showed you. Um, you know, we do some Tom Petty songs and Stan in the day, back in the old days used a 22 or at least a 20 China often for that switch, for that big, if you listen to songs like The Waiting um, or even the loser, stop dragging my heart around. You hear him hitting a China and it's a bigger, you know, lower pitched, more kind of whooshy sounding China. So I want to get something like that. Um, okay. And now I'm going to show you my last two very special symbols. And they are original Turkish 22 inch Istanbul K's. These are from, I believe, the 70s. Um, I don't really know how to date these the way other people do, but I have two 22s that I got a hold of in the 80s. Um, and they were used, or at least were some of the symbols when Zildjian designed the Constantinople line in 1996 and 97. I brought these in from home, these two 22s, and we modeled some of the design from these. I mean, we, we took a lot of input from people like Bill Stewart and Brian Blade, Adam Nussbaum, uh, people that had original Ks, like the real deal Ks. And we would borrow them and, you know, measure them and weigh them and do all the things that Paul would do with them. And, uh, and so these, this one, and its brother, were two that we used to help um, 
designed the original K Constantinople. So as a result, I get a royalty on every K Constantinople that Zildjian sells, even today. That's how I can afford to buy all these symbols. No, I'm kidding. That's not true. All right. Lastly, I'm going to wrap it up in a minute. I just want to show you these symbols. I think I've showed you these before. Um, Billy Bob Thornton, the Oscar-winning actor, uh, also a fine drummer, guitar player, singer, uh, came to me, came to visit uh, me at Zildjian. I don't know when, it's sometime in the 2000s, and signed this for me. Um, my old buddy, what's going on? Vinny Kalayuda. Um, Ah, oh, this one. This one's very special. The late, great Mitch Mitchell um, sent this to me. I, you know, I think maybe I sent him a symbol. He didn't end up using it, so he sent this back and uh, signed, which was very kind and very sweet. Um, let's see what else. This one. My good buddy, Steve Gadd. John, you're the worst. That's the way Steve, you know, that's his, that's a sign of affection toward me from Steve. You're the worst. I love this. Um, what else? Ginger Baker. Very cool. And he wrote cool. I got my friend Jim McGathy to thank for that one. Um, Adam Nussbaum, my old buddy. Adam's nickname for me was the ever dangerous Mr. D. He'd say, ever dangerous. So when we designed the uh, Renaissance ride with Adam, um, I was involved in, uh, you know, helping make that happen. Of course, Paul Francis and he designed it. Um, but this came off the first production line and Adam insisted that I get one and he signed it to me. And, and it's a beautiful symbol and I really should use it. I should play it sometime. I know he would want me to. Um, Beautiful symbol from a beautiful guy, Adam Nussbaum. I love him. And uh, saving the best for last year. This is from my dear friend, the great Charlie Watts. Um, and as I mentioned, I'm going to have uh, the author of his biography, Paul Sexton, on the show on Wednesday. So check that out. But this is Charlie signed this to me in 2000. I brought, I went to a rehearsal in Boston brought him this symbol to try. He hit it, didn't like it, gave it back to me. <laughs> and uh, I said, well, can you sign it for me? He said, sure, if you want me to. Of course I wanted him to. So, But I, re I repaid the favor years later, as you probably know, and I gave him an old A that I'd been holding for many years. That's a beautiful A that, that he is in his collection now. So, And last but not least, this 1940s A Zildjian. Armin Zildjian signed to me, my dear friend. And if you can't read it to my friend, Johnny D, just stay as good as you are, Armin Zildjian. Um, and this is really special. And it's a beautiful symbol. If you haven't heard it, I'll play it for you. 20 inch. So that's it. I'll probably think of more things to tell you about when I end this today. But thanks for watching, everybody.